It's not just the loss of a baby, but it's the loss of a dream. My name's Chrissy Carter, and I'm here to talk about infertility. My journey to motherhood was long and heartbreaking. I just expected to get pregnant. And the truth is, when we started trying, I did. But um, we had a miscarriage. And that's, I think, when the rug got ripped out from underneath me and I was faced with the kind of fear and heartbreak that I had never experienced before. And that's really when our journey began. It took us almost five years to get pregnant successfully. We had four miscarriages and long periods of infertility in between. It was a really long road and that's a really long time to be carrying feelings like grief, sadness. For me, it definitely led me towards depression and anger and a feeling that I really couldn't escape. So all I ever knew was disappointment and all I ever knew was failure. So you really begin to believe that it's just not going to happen. The grief of infertility is so difficult because it's this nameless, faceless grief that doesn't offer any closure. You've loved something with your whole heart, with your whole self, and then you lose it and you, you never got to hold it, you never got to love it in person. And so for me, I think one of the hardest things about the process of infertility was navigating grief and finding a way to move forward with hope and with an open heart. It's not just the loss of a baby, but it's the loss of a dream. It's the feeling like you may never have the, the baby that you wanted. I don't know if infertility is taboo so much as it's something that I'm not sure people really know what to do with. I think it's really challenging, especially in our culture, to sit and hold space for someone who is suffering. And I mean, I could write a book about things that people said to me that really broke my heart, even though I know it was coming from a good place. There were a lot of comments like, it's a natural part of the process. People would ask me, so when are you gonna get pregnant? Like, when is this all gonna happen for you? Why don't you wanna have a baby? In our attempts to try and fix things, we say things maybe with the best intentions that are so not helpful. I think there's a lot of work that we can all do in learning how to just be compassionate listeners without judgment, without trying to fix. And I know because I tried so hard to feel better. All I wanted to do was feel better. But at the end of the day, you can't fix grief. You can't take away pain. And sometimes you just have to sit with it and abide in it. Meditation is a tool I already had in my toolbox as a yoga and meditation teacher, but through this process of infertility, I learned to use meditation in a different way. For me personally, meditation was the one place where I felt like I had permission to be not okay, that it was okay that I wasn't able to get over my grief. It was okay that I was struggling. It was okay that I was heartbroken. I felt such immense pressure to get over it, to move on, to feel better. And meditation was the place where I felt like I could actually sit with some of these difficult emotions and have the space to process them. That's the space where I think healing actually happens. There are a lot of options in terms of medical support that can help you on your fertility journey. Um, for me, that looked like IVF. But I have to say that it was a really difficult decision for me because it felt like we were setting ourselves up for an even bigger fall. That I had only ever known miscarriage up until that point or infertility up until that point. IVF just felt like such an immense mountain and the fall from which I wasn't quite sure if I could handle. We were really, really fortunate to have a successful first try and my daughter is gonna be a year old, which is just sort of mind blowing. Even now, even with my daughter in my arms, it's still really difficult to talk about. But I remember that when I was going through it, the one thing that helped me was hearing stories from other women who had been through it. It gave me hope. It allowed me to see 
the full journey from beginning to end and it allowed me to imagine what it would be like to hold my baby in my arms. So I would say to anyone who's struggling with talking about their experience, know that in sharing your story, you are empowering a lot of people who are struggling. It felt like a dream to hold my child for the first time. I could not be more grateful that she chose me to be her mom and I'm so strangely grateful for this very long, painful journey because it brought me to her.